Another day, another recap. Today I'll be diving into a true Stroy action crime movie titled Killerman. Some massive spoilers ahead and as always enjoy the recap. The movie kicks off explaining that per year in America over $100 billion worth of illegal products are sold. The hardest issue for the dealers is simply cleaning their money. As a car drives through the streets of New York City, it eventually comes to a stop and a man opens the boot and jumps out. He grabs a box and walks into the building across the road to meet Mo. The man himself goes by the name Petty, and after dropping a lot of cash walks back to the car. After some time Mo heads down to a jewelry store and goes to the back, he hands the money over and watches as the man double counts it. The man then grabs his own package and hands Mo a massive gold bullion and he simply walks out. He continues walking down the street and goes to another jeweler and sells him the gold bullion for an authorized check. He heads back to his place and repeats the same process over and over but with different jewelry stores every time. Once he's done he heads back to the car from earlier to meet the driver Skunk. After being handed over a million dollars worth in checks, Skunk tells Mo that when the boss brings him in they'll take over. With their former boss recently killed, Mo knows he is the only one that can launder massive amounts for anyone. On a sky rise, the duo meet a man that goes by the name Hunk. He tells Skunk his nephew that he is buying this sky rise and wants to clean all his money. After being handed the one million dollars in checks, he asks Mo if he can do two million a day over two weeks. Mo says he can do it but asks for the drops to be conducted at a series of locations instead of his place. With that the duo walk out and get to work. The first drop immediately takes place and as they do their job, Hunk gets a call from an FBI agent who tells him to stop what he's doing for the time being. Hunk immediately gives the boys a call and speaks in code to say to stop work for the day. Skunk is annoyed as now they have to hold the money and stay away from the base of operations until tomorrow. Mo doesn't like what's already happening and Skunk then gets an idea. The two head down to Chinatown and someone drops them a key from the roof. The duo heads upstairs and Skunk tells Mo he wants to use his uncle's money to make their own drug deal and return it the next day. Mo refuses to do it and Skunk tells him off for being such a bit. After deciding to not let his friend get killed, Mo agrees to help on the condition he cannot use FedEx's money. Skunk then calls his buyer to confirm that he has his money ready to buy the product. Mo then makes a call to a woman to tell her he cannot make it anymore, and as you'd expect she gets quite upset. After all is said and done, the duo head to FedEx to grab the connect he wants to buy the product off. Mo, however, tells FedEx they do not want any of his money but will give him 10% of all profits they get. He eventually agrees to do it even though they were supposed to go halves on the deal. After being handed the connect the two make a meetup point for that night and leave. They immediately head over to the Nigerian supplier there buying the product off. The two walk up to the men and link up with Debo. After the product is shown and tested for good measure everything seems good. Skunk then grabs the money from the car and hands it over when suddenly cars come flying in from all directions. Weirdly enough it seems to be the cops who tell Debo and his men to go away. After grabbing one kilo and taking off as per the cops' instructions, Mo and Skunk hide behind a wall. They are told to come out and Mo quickly deduces that these dirty cops are out to kill. Two of them come for a sneak attack but are shot at from someone. Seems a sniper named Suzuki is providing cover and the duo use this to grab the product and money and run to the car while the cops are pinned down. The two manage to speed away, and the bags are put into Suzuki's car with both vehicles immediately taking off. The cops don't give up that easily though and chase the BMW. Nonetheless, Mo is a pretty good driver and manages to lose the cops. Problematically though, they end up in quite an ugly accident, and are both very dazed. With everything they have they manage to get out of the car and attempt to flee the scene as the cops run in on them. Suzuki then pulls up and they get in and take off with Mo in quite a bad condition. Some while later, the deputy chief of police Bill tells off his agent Leon for losing the product and money. As they stole it from evidence Bill tells Leon he has a couple days to get it back or they're all f At the hospital, Skunk and Mo are told the police are coming to take a report. But once they arrive they find no one there. On the street though Mo isn't feeling the best and is taken to one of Skunk's friends. Seems Mo can't remember much at all and is suffering from amnesia. After booking in a stay at a hotel, the cash is shown to Mo to see if it jogs his memory. The product doesn't work either though and Mo is not happy in the slightest sense. Skunk then tells him to get ready with their meeting with FedEx, but Mo loses the plot and screams at Skunk as he doesn't know him. He instead puts a bullet into the window. With rage he walks on the balcony and looks at the city quite clearly annoyed at not remembering who he is or what he's done. Back at FedEx's shop, Leon and his boys walk in and see FedEx's dad and ask for the security camera footage. Leon then tells the man that his son was supposed to attend a drug deal and fortunately for him he didn't go and wasn't killed. Once FedEx shows his face, Leon laughs and kills FedEx's dad and drops his son to the ground. The other two in the meantime head to a club and link up with Suzuki. Mo then empties out his pockets and goes through his things to see if his memory comes back but it does not work. When he goes to the bathroom to freshen up, he is randomly attacked by a man to which he quickly neutralizes him. Mo then decides that leaving the man awake is a problem and puts him to sleep. 
Later it seems the man named Barakuta is a cop but is not a dirty one. Leon plays it off with him and to get him to keep it a secret, mentions some dirty blues may be involved. The next day, Skunk introduces Mo to his uncle's crew and tells them about his memory loss. Skunk then goes inside to give the cash back to his uncle. Outside, Mo speaks to Petty who tells him that he is his father. He and the boys laugh at him, and a fight almost breaks out until Hunk comes and shuts them up. He takes the duo inside who confess about everything they tried to do behind his back. He is not happy and just then he receives a call by one of his FBI informants who tells him the cops are after his nephew and that weirdly enough someone from Congressman Freed's office conducted an FBI search on Hunk. Once the call ends, Hunk tells his nephew to give him back his money and leave New York forever. He will allow them to keep the product though and that means he gets a cut from all profits they make in their entire lives. After Hunk gifts the duo a car, Mo wants to quickly swing past his apartment and Skunk reluctantly agrees. Guiding him through the streets Mo cannot remember where he used to live. Once they arrive Mo looks around but nothing looks familiar. The two notice the apartment door is open though and go upstairs with their gun ready only to find a woman there named Lola. Seems she is Mo's partner who Skunk didn't know about. She is told how Mo lost his memory, and he immediately tells Skunk to leave. He goes to grab Suzuki and as he walks off Lola tears up at the thought of Mo losing his memory. The two have a long deep and meaningful conversation where Lola reminds him that she's pregnant with his child and is ready to give it all up for Mo as she has done before. Skunk on the other hand calls up Suzuki and tells him to come to Mo's in an hour. But Leon is on to them though and Skunk is quickly jumped at and knocked out. Mo grabs Lola and they both take off from the back exit. While they are shot at, Skunk is thrown and cuffed in the back of a cop car. Mo is shot at once again and their chaser keeps advancing on them. The two run inside a building and Leon goes to cut them off. Mo's pursuer meanwhile slowly walks around the kitchen where Mo and Lola are hiding from him. When the opportunity presents itself Mo clobbers the dirty cop from behind and kicks the gun away but not before landing a shot in Lola. Mo directly takes her to the hospital where she is taken to emergency and prepped for surgery. He is forced to leave her alone and just holds onto her necklace. Suzuki and Skunk meanwhile are trapped and tortured by the dirty cops while Lola commences her surgery. Problematically, she flatlines mid-surgery and Mo is told he needs to leave. Suzuki on the other hand can barely breathe and Leon puts it on him and Skunk as he wants the product as well as Mo. Both men remain quiet but they don't have much time left. Mo in the meantime leaves the hospital and goes directly to Hunk with a loaded pistol. Petty goes to attack him but is cleaned however, with a gun on Mo he is forced to surrender. After being taken directly to Hunk, Hunk tells him that his nephew is a moron and that he must give the cops the product back to fix this mess. Mo doesn't see it that way and has murder and revenge in his mind, but Hunk demands his product and money when Mo screams he wants to find them dirty cops. He then explains to Hunk how they treated his sister's kid like a dog and he tells Petty to release Mo. He agrees to help find them on the condition he brings his money, product and the dirty coppers' heads in exchange for Skunk's freedom, with that Mo hands Hunk Debo's name and number. To get the intel required, Hunk Loki links up with his FBI informant who gives him the exact address for Debo. The agent then advises Hunk to let everything blow away as his building starts in two weeks, but Hunk refuses to listen to him. Mo in the meantime is handed some bullets and is driven to his quest for revenge. Mo walks into the building where Debo is supposed to be at, and is asked who he's with. He flashes some cash and is told to wait. However, he walks around the apartment instead and takes a look at what's going on around him. When no one watches him, he drops some petrol on the ground and lights a fire while running into Debo's room with a gun. After tipping some more petrol on Debo, Mo wants to know exactly what happened and the boss Picasa confesses the swine come in every month to take their money and that when they set Mo up they also set him up. With a fire outside the door, Mo shoots at Picasa and wants him to call the cops. Back to both Skunk and Suzuki, they still do not reveal the location of the money or the product. However, Leon is prepared and is about to let a dog be released at the two of them if they don't open up. Skunk is scared like he's never been before and Suzuki's cage is then opened up. The dog begins tearing him apart while Skunk is forced to watch his friends suffer and scream until he eventually dies. Even with all of that, Skunk swears on his life he has no idea where anything is. Eventually though, he says he will say the location but they will still kill him. Leon explains that he wants to return the product to the evidence room and that killing Skunk might make his uncle retaliate so it's not worth it. Skunk then decides to finally give up the location and at the same time Bacasa calls Leon and says he wants to buy more of the product he took. And Leon agrees to it. With there being no more use for Bacasa, Mo decides to shoot him as the fire he set from earlier creeps into the room. Mo legs it with Debo and runs back to the hotel to grab the money while Debo remains in the boot gagged. Simultaneously, Leon and his accomplice arrive at the hotel and go to the same room. They discover only the product but no cash. Mo explains to Debo that all they want is the cash and he wants to lure the cops in with it. After parking in a car park, Mo leaves Debo alone in the car as he waits to buy the product off Leon. He soon arrives and Mo hides behind a car and sees this. Leon then goes inside Debo's car and aims a gun at him and wants to know why his boss changed his mind. 
but problematically as Debo tries to answer, he is popped straight in the head. Leon then goes to the boot and laughs when he discovers the money and how dumb Debo is. As he and his man drive off, Mo runs back to the car and dumps Debo outside before quickly taking off. The dirty cops park their car inside a warehouse with Mo silently approaching the building. He sneaks around to try and find a way in, but he does not. Leon then gives Bill a call and says he will return it to evidence that night. He continues by telling his men they are not splitting the money with Bill and are keeping it to themselves. As everything is completed, cleaning evidence is the only task remaining. Leon's man tells Skunk it's time to meet his maker and aims his gun and boom. Mo beats him to it and tells Skunk to wait a minute before going away. Leon then comes to the scene to Skunk acting dead and looks for his man but cannot see him. Suddenly he spots a gun coming out of a cage and is shot. Mo steps out and Leon cannot believe that he has the guts to shoot a cop. Mo then puts a bullet into his chest, making him slowly feel the pain of death before pulling out a sword and finally satisfying his revenge. Once he's done, Mo goes to the second dirty copper and executes him just the same. Skunk is released from his prison and breathes a sigh of relief. Mo explains they'll leave when their business with Hunk is finished. At the FBI headquarters, they seem to have voice recordings, photos and evidence of everything from Hunk to Debo to confessions of Mo and Skunk. The FBI agent from earlier calls Hunk and says to listen to a recording of his nephew, and that he has one hour to clean up. Hunk is then sent a recording just as the duo pull up. The two sit down in his office with the heads of both the dirty cops which makes Hunk shocked. He tells Mo he is a man of his word and as he goes to leave he is punched to the ground by Petty. After being dragged into a separate room, Skunk has played a recording of both him and Mo speaking from earlier. Seems the cops recovered his phone when he went to hospital and found he was recording everyone's conversations. The biggest plot twist is yet to come when Hunk explains that Mo is an undercover cop. His real name is Frank Killerman, and it also seems that Lola is alive but not his baby. Hunk loses it even more and says Lola never even knew Mo's real name and pulls out a pistol. He explains to his nephew that he brought Mo here and he needs to finish it. Skunk agrees to do what needs to be done, and Mo is dragged back inside the room. With confusion on Mo's face, Skunk loses the plot and decides to put a bullet into every single person in the room including his uncle who all instantly die. Mo asks what Hunk was trying to tell him but Skunk makes up a lie and does not tell him of who he once was. He then picks up the cash and walks out the front door while Mo does the same with the product. They load the stuff into a car and drive right out the exit. The duo that started it all stayed loyal to each other, and they drive to their freedom. As this was based off a true story, the duo officially disappeared on October 2014 and it is not known whether Frank ever learned of his true identity. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this recap, make sure to smack that like and subscribe button and as always see you on the next one.